This episode of DPV, we're putting disc brakes on the front of my 69 Impala. So if you haven't seen the first video in this series where I tore down the disc brake parts and cleaned them up, painted them up, whatnot, I'll put a video link right up here so uh, you can check that out first. In this episode, we'll be tearing the drum brakes off the front of my car, uh, taking all those spindles and knuckles off and replacing them with the disc brake parts. All right, got the jack stand set up. Now we'll start tearing this sucker down. All right, so the wheel was kind of stuck, but I was able to just, uh, you know, pull off the spindle nut and take the whole thing off. Now I'm just gonna try to split it here, take the tie rod off here, and split the lower ball joint, um, and just take this whole assembly off instead of trying to take this apart here. The way I understand it is <clears throat> 69 and 70, you could get disc brakes. 69 was the first year disc brakes on the Impala, um, <clears throat> but they used a different spindle than the drum brake cars, and it was 69 and 70 only. All these ball joints and tie rod ends are new from when I was in high school. They don't have a lot of miles in them, so we'll run them. All right, so now to the part of the process where I gotta take these upper and lower ball joint nuts off. This is where it's super important that we get a jack under here because the pressure in the spring there is really, really high. And if you do not hold that spring pressure with like a jack, um, it can be really dangerous. Right now I got the shock in there, so that'll also obviously help keep it in there. You don't want that spring popping out of there and you know, busting your face up. All right, so I was trying to figure out what the difference was between the drum brake knuckle and the disc brake knuckle. And they really look the same. So even when you look on the side, like you can see the Kind of the shape of the spindle it really looks the same i haven't i haven't measured them but they look to be same to me now this is where the difference is in the steering arm you can see the disc brake steering arm has the same shape from the bolt pattern up to where it connects to the, the tie rod. But on the other end, um, it's got this little spot that I believe is where the uh, caliper bracket attaches to. 
I'm not totally certain. We'll, we'll see when I start putting it back together. But the drum brake steering arm does not have that. So don't take my word for it, but I think if you've got the drum brakes, you should be able to use your factory spindles and just replace the steering arms and then of course backing plates and the hubs and rotors. I wanna take a moment to thank my sponsor for this video, Summit Racing. I've been buying parts from Summit Racing for nearly two decades. Started when I was 14, building the Edelbrock 350 motor in this car. They have exceptional customer service and they have all the parts you need for whatever you're building, whether it be hot rod, a Jeep, or even your daily driver. Thanks again, Summit, for sponsoring this video. I'll put all the part numbers I use for the, this disc brake project in the description below. And keep a lookout for the article for On All Cylinders, Summit Racing's blog. I'll be writing an article for them, and as soon as it's posted, I'll put that link in the description below as well. But the next phase of this process, we're gonna be assembling the steering arms and spindles and backing plates, that kind of stuff. So in the first episode, I, I cleaned up all these parts and uh, you know, with the sandblaster and wire wheel, painted them all up nice. So now we're just gonna put them together. All right, so I had to wait for some new boots. I damaged the, the boots that were on this thing with the tie rod fork. So anyway, gonna replace these boots and get it back together. All right, so now with the spindle installed, we got to clean up the bearings or the hubs, get those installed. Got some new seals for this inside edge here. Um, so we'll get those installed and then um, hold up these rotors. All right, so I had a few camera issues when filming this. Uh, lost some of the footage that was kind of important, which is a huge bummer, but I'll do a quick recap on some of the things I did. So I got the calipers rebuilt, um, put in new seals. The cylinders looked really good, the bore looks really good. So um, put new seals in here, new dust boot on there, uh, new brake pads, and got that all hooked up. Also got some brand new brake lines. The brake lines are a little bit different on the disc brake. They have a longer hard line right here to bring the line behind the spindle um, and then up and around. The drum brake line has just a little short hard line and it attaches um, behind the spindle rather than you know up front. So anyway, nice new brake lines there. Got new dust boots on um, ball joints and tie rod ends. And then those are just the factory 1969 rotors. So anyway, thank you for watching this video. In the next video, we'll be putting in the new booster, massive cylinder, swapping out the steering column for the one without the shifter, since I've got that B&M mega shifter on the, on the floorboard. 
putting in that disc brake pedal that has the disc brake emblem on it and hopefully testing it as long as the snow holds out. So if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, share this video with your friends, and I'll see you next time.